good afternoon. I'm Brian Reagan, and this is Tyler Kelly coming to you from the Lake Butler Church of Christ in Lake Butler, Florida, on this Good Friday. And the only thing good about it was that Christ paid for our sins. The rest of the day is actually kind of a bad day uh, as far as the events of that day. Uh, Tyler, if you don't mind, would you read uh, 26 through... 33. I can do that. Now as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, a Siren, a Simon, a Cyrian, who was coming from the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And a great multitude of the people followed him, and women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren, wombs that never bore, and breasts which never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in the green wood, what will be done in the dry? There were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. You know, as we look at this passage, uh, Jesus, by the time that you're watching this historically, Jesus would have been on the cross for about three, three and a half hours. And, uh, you know, but as Jesus makes that march toward the cross, Simon being compelled to help him, of which uh, Simon, uh, we believe it was his two sons, Rufus and Alexander, are uh, mentioned later on in the New Testament, that this person eventually became a child of God, a Christian. And the women who have been faithful and followed Jesus, they are now mourning and lamenting his apostles having fled. Uh, we do not see anyone other than John ever mentioned specifically. And uh, so this is a troublesome time, but look at what Jesus says there in verse 28. Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. And why does he say that? It's because of what he says. What he says, if this is what they do during a green time, what will it be like when it's dry? And, you know, as, as we are going through this time with, with COVID and all that in our country, um, and as it seems like certain aspects of our president's cabinet are trying to use this for uh, some interesting purposes, uh, we'll leave it at that. We've been in a green time. And if this is how things are when things are in a green time, what will it be like when things are dry? And Tyler, do you have some thoughts on that before we... That Jesus going to the cross felt worse for them than he felt for himself. And so there's a place where you and I can take comfort that Jesus, Jesus has compassion on our situation under human governments here. He does have that for us. All right. Well, then, if you don't mind, Tyler, if you'll go ahead and read 34 through uh, 44. All right. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offered him, or offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And so as, <clears throat> as verse 44 says, the sixth hour being roughly noon, that darkness came over the earth 
from noon until about three o'clock. But as we go back and look at verse 32 and 33, that they had these two others, criminals, with him to be put to death. And uh, everybody focuses on thief on the cross. But you have to remember that for a couple hours, that thief on the cross, he was also speaking evil of Jesus, the other gospels inform us. That it, he, he, he wasn't always at a place of faith and resignation uh, to what was going on. But we'll go on ahead, Tyler. Do you have some thoughts on this passage before I hit two or three big main points? Sorry about that. Um, like you were saying earlier, though, um, and I think it's, I forget which gospel, even the high priest and others complain and grab because when Pilate puts up the inscription calling him the king of the Jews, everybody else complains because they're like, well, we're not claiming him, but Pilate says, I've put down what I've put down and that's all there is to it. So even Pilate is acknowledging him for what he claims to be and what he says he is instead of just letting the high priest get their way because like I think we talked about either yesterday or on Wednesday Pilate's own pretty much willing to acknowledge that Jesus is who he says he is but like you said he's also not willing to put up with the Jews causing him any more trouble than he already has to put up with and so he's like no I'm doing this my way and basically thumb my nose at y'all because I'm done with your nonsense and, and that's, a, that's a good point. Um, you know, and that, that hits at the first saying of Jesus that we have here. Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Uh, they were part of a larger plan that began all the way back in Genesis 3. That the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent, meaning Jesus, the virgin birth. Mary was prophesied back there. Jesus was prophesied. The crucifixion was looked forward to these people didn't know uh, that they were part of a larger scheme of redemption and with what they mock he saved others let him save himself he could have saved himself he could have called for 12 legions of angels at least but instead he says no i need to go do this why not for those that that are going to reject him, but for those who are going to believe and obey and accept him. And, you know, you point out about the designation king of the Jews. As a rebel king, from a Roman perspective, parading him in front of the crowd in disgrace and then nailing him to a cross with his moniker was a sign of Roman triumph. And so how Pilate handles it will make it so he's good with Rome, but it upsets the Jews because they have already said, we have no king but Caesar. And so now they're in a quandary because they really don't bow the knee to Caesar and they've rejected the only king they have. And then we come, of course, to that famous thief and I want to give you something to, to think about. Once the nails went in, once the judgment of crucifixion and the scourging had happened, no one ever went to a crucifixion that they interrupted it for a pardon. It, it was final. And this thief on the cross, as he looks at him and says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This man most likely had probably been either a disciple of John or Jesus because he calls Jesus Lord. He had knowledge that Jesus was a king. He had knowledge that Jesus had a kingdom. And he, on the cross, believed and knew that Jesus would conquer death. You know, when someone says to me, I just want to be saved like a thief on the cross, I have to look at him and say, frankly, you don't have enough faith. And this guy, as he comes through his pain, comes back to a place of clarity, rebukes his co-conspirator, 
and then repents, confesses, and acknowledges more truth about Jesus in one line than everyone else pretty much combined in all of Jesus' life. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now we go to this next one, and I do want to address this, and we're going to have a series coming out in about a week or two about the afterlife. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is not heaven, y'all. This is, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Luke, what is called Abraham's bosom. Jesus was going to go into the realm of souls, the realm of the undead as it were, what we would call, what the New Testament calls Hades, what the Old Testament called Sheol. The thief did not go to heaven. Paradise in the Gospels has the designation and the meaning of the bosom of Abraham. Jesus did not go to heaven until his ascension. Therefore, it is a false teaching to say that Jesus and the thief went to heaven. That's not true. Jesus went into the realm of undead souls. He went to that same place where the rich man and Lazarus were, between which was a great gulf fixed, and we're going to deal with that in our special series. But Jesus saying to that man, you'll be with me in paradise, means you're on the Abraham's bosom side of the line. You're going to go to heaven. The other thief, to everything we know, he went to the realm of torments when he died. When the thief, this thief died, the angels carried his soul to Abraham's bosom, and that man had rest. And so as we think about this, and as you think about darkness descending on the earth, the darkness that descended on the earth is nothing compared to the darkness of the ignorance of the sin and rebellion of humanity on that day. And dare we say, even in our own time, the ignorance that descends upon us and of darkness by people who can't see the simplicity of this and of their Savior. I'm Brian Reagan, and this is Tyler Kelly. We bid you good day, good Friday, and we will come back this evening with some closing thoughts as we end the day with Jesus dead. See you then.